and local news leader. Fox 22 News at 10. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Beth Jones. And I'm Peter Dubois. A man was shot and killed by law enforcement in Brewer today following an alleged robbery. According to Brewer, police officers responded to a reported robbery at the Brewer Walmart just before 1030 a.m. Brewer police say the suspect brandished a firearm to store workers before fleeing into the nearby woods. Brewer police say police chief Jason Moffat responded to the area and located the male suspect. Police say the suspect did not follow his commands and appeared to reach for his weapon, at which point he was shot and killed. Chief Moffat has been placed on administrative leave, which is standard procedure in any officer involved shooting. The suspect's identity is not being released at this time. Authorities have found the body of a missing Goldsboro woman. 61-year-old Lorianne Reed was last seen leaving her home on Grand Marsh Bay Road around 7.30 Wednesday night. She reportedly had confusion and mobility issues. Her family reported her missing Thursday afternoon and the search for her began. The Warden Service, Civil Air Patrol, aircraft and dogs were all part of the search effort today. Warden Ralph Hosford says her body was located around 2.15 this afternoon. When these calls go out in these small communities that make Maine so special, some people from the area showed up and they were the ones that found her. Hosford says her body was found more than a half mile from her home. He says the searchers were pushing to find her before more bad weather set in. He says while it's not the outcome they were hoping for, they are relieved to give the family closure. A man from Bar Harbor convicted of raping and killing a former classmate was back in court today challenging his conviction. Our Matthew Jaroncic has details. Jalik Keen stood inside Waldo County Superior Court on Friday for an evidentiary hearing. Keen has filed a challenge against his conviction and a sentence of 58 years in prison for raping and murdering 19-year-old Michaela Conley. According to court documents, in May 2018, Keen and Conley were at the Connors Elementary School playground in Bar Harbor late at night. Surveillance cameras around the school showed Keen carrying Conley's body, which was found in the woods on June 2, 2018. On the night of the murder, surveillance cameras showed Keen coming back to the playground to wash his hands. Keen's former defense attorneys Jeffrey Toothacre and Don Corbett have gone on record that Keen claims the sex with Conley was consensual. The hearing Friday challenged whether Keen's former attorneys were effective in representing their client throughout the trial. Attorney Jeffrey Toothacre took the stand claiming that he was missing some evidence at the beginning of the trial that affected his preparation. Attorney Don Corbett testified that she and Toothacre went into trial with the PTSD defense, claiming the PTSD stems from Keen's tough upbringing. Keen's new attorney, Justin Andrus, argued that the defense in the 2019 trial was ineffective in representing the defendant and that Justice Murray should grant him a new trial. Donald Maycumber, the assistant attorney general in the criminal division, and Keene's current defense attorney declined to comment on the matter. In Belfast, Matthew Jaroncic, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. The Kennebec County Grand Jury has indicted a woman who allegedly started a fire because of a dispute. 30-year-old Jamie Perry was indicted on one count of arson. Perry allegedly started a fire in her apartment at a multi-unit building on Roderick Street in Clinton in January. All the tenants in the building were able to get out safely. A state police spokesperson says officers found Perry wrapped in a blanket behind a snowbank. They say Perry told police she started the fire over a disagreement with her landlord. And a Norwich Walk man who allegedly led state police on a pursuit with a stolen vehicle was also indicted. In December, Waterville police responded to a report of a vehicle theft at the Cumberland Farms on College Ave. 57-year-old Lawrence Knowles was identified as a suspect through video footage. During the chase, authorities put up a roadblock, but the vehicle left the interstate. It was later located on the Howe Road, and Knowles was arrested. Two crashes occurred during the chase that damaged other vehicles. Knowles was indicted on a variety of charges to include driving to endanger and unauthorized use of property. A bill that would help protect health care professionals who offer abortion and gender-affirming care passed, a com passed through committee along party lines yesterday. The bill is known as a shield law and was created as a response to other states passing bans and restrictions on abortion and gender-affirming care. If passed, Maine hospitals and doctors would not have to comply with demands for information from states that have restrictions. Republicans have called the bill a, quote, transgender trafficking 
Parenting Bill and expressed concerns about parental rights last week. The bill drew attention after attorneys general from 16 states that restrict care sent a letter threatening legal action if Maine enacts the bill. The bill passed, passed committee by a vote of 8 to 4 and will now face a full vote in the legislature. An emotional public hearing in the Government Oversight Committee today as those affected by the failures of the Department of Health and Human Services spoke up after a recent watchdog report. That report from the Office of Program Evaluation and Government Accountability highlights details about the department's efforts to push for reunification for parents and children who were placed in state care. According to the report, OPEGA found four challenges that were prevalent in a majority of cases studied, including concerns with the practices of caseworkers, staffing shortages, wait lists for treatment, and the lack of timely filing of termination of parental rights. I could go on forever about what these kids have been through, but we'll finish up with my suggestions. One being, sometimes it's not safe to place kids back with bio families. The kids' needs need to be paramount. Timeline for, as far as hearings to be allowed uh, to be followed to the letter. Um, not one of the cases I have ever had a Jeopardy hearing in 120 days. As a matter of fact, some of them have been over well over a year. We reached out to the Department of Health and Human Services and have not yet received a response. Well, switching gears now, avian flu is killing tens of thousands of seals and sea lions in different corners of the world, disrupting ecosystems and stumping scientists who don't see a clear way to slow down the devastating disease. The, world, the worldwide bird flu outbreak that began in 2020 has led to the deaths of millions of domesticated birds and spread to wildlife all over the globe. This virus isn't thought to be a major threat to humans, but its spread in farming operations and ecosystems has caused widespread economic turmoil and environmental disruptions. Scientists say seals and sea lions in places as far away as Maine and Chile appear to be especially vulnerable to this disease. President Biden has approved a disaster declaration for the state of Maine for areas affected by the severe storms and flooding between January 9th and the 13th. That means federal funding will be available to affected individuals in Cumberland, Hancock, Knox, Lincoln, Sagadahawk, Waldo, Washington, and York counties. Federal funding is also available to state, tribal, and eligible local governments, as well as certain private nonprofit organizations on a cost-sharing basis for emergency work and the repair or replacement of facilities damaged by flooding. You can apply with FEMA by calling 1-800-621-3362 or by using the FEMA app. Just some welcome news for so many Mainers along the coast. Yeah, you know, we've gotten that one-two punch of the December storms and then the January storms has been so very hard yeah. on Maine people and numerous counties. So, you know, good to hear that the help that we need is hopefully on the way. Yeah. Unfortunately, something else that's on the way, more bad weather. Absolutely, yeah. Right. We just celebrated the start of spring and mm -hmm. yet more snow is on the way. Seems about right for mm -hmm. this time of year. Right. All right, well, let's go ahead and get a first check of our forecast. Thank you so much. And finally, we are in the clear, right? Today we are in the clear. This is the calm before the storm, folks. Get ready. A lot of snow is on the way. We're talking feet of snow in some spots by Sunday morning. For now, though, definitely feels like winter. We do have a couple of inches of snow on the ground here in town. Greenville, Millinocket area, a lot more up north. But we're going to be piling up all of the snow nearly two feet of snow in some spots and it's going to be in and out of here in 24 hours so uh, i wouldn't say it's going to be a long lasting system at all temperature wise earlier today near freezing in town mid 30s by the coast and mid 20s right up by greenville hour by hour forecast does show the snow working its way back into the area temperatures hovering near 20. All right, well, let's hope most people just have to get up and have coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah, let's hope so. All right, well, still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, the deadline to obtain your real ID is getting closer. We'll take you through the process. And we'll hear from Millinocket officials as they prepare for a huge influx of visitors during the total solar eclipse. Stay tuned for those stories and more. the freedom of driving the all-new 2024 Subaru Forester. Buy with 1.9% financing or lease for just $319 per month. It's your Subaru. Find it at Quark. Great Scott! This is Green Bear 420 in 2010. What kind of trip is this? 
I gotta get back to 2023. Wait, it's 2015. So much has changed. In 2023, we had a lot more glass, t-shirts, and novelties. It's gonna take a bolt of lightning to get me home. Finally, home at last. Now Green Bear 420, Green Bear Green Care is bigger and better than ever. To be continued. My father worked at the mill for over 30 years. He was exposed to a great community and excelled at his job, but he was also exposed to asbestos. The air quality inside the mill was always his biggest complaint. He had no idea how deadly some of the products and materials were. When he was diagnosed with mesothelioma, we knew to call Joe Bornstein's office to get my dad the help he needs and the justice he deserves. Call Joe today for a free case evaluation. There's never a fee unless you win. Tired of your internet service constantly letting you down? Those other providers may promise the world with their flashy advertisements, but are you truly having a good customer experience? Fear not, because there's a new player in town. Introducing GoNet Speed. No more endless hold times or automated responses. We're here to listen, support, and provide you with the exceptional service you deserve. Our fast, reliable fiber internet, it's mind blowing. Let us show you what true internet satisfaction feels like. England. Kane scores! Brazil. It can never get better than this! Saturday at 2.30 Eastern on Fox. The 2024 Mitsubishi Outlander. You bear! Thunder! At Quirk Mitsubishi. Get Thunderstruck. Is this how you prove you earn the crown? How you shut up the haters? Handle the heat. Who's going to make the move? It's going to be a must win. Is this a shooting star? Rock star. Superstar. Okay, okay. Let's all take a deep breath. Because once we peel out, there's no looking back. You ready? Welcome back. The University of Maine is, to, is working to develop wearable electronics that can actually repair themselves. Our David Ledford sat down with those leading the project to learn more. Technology you can wear. It's very exciting. Attachable sensors are used in healthcare, robotics, and more to collect information, like a patient's heart rate. University of Maine assistant professor Evan Wojcik and a team of students are working to make that technology more comfortable and last longer with a sensor that can repair itself like skin. So those polymer molecules want to be amongst themselves so much that they'll actually, when they're severed and cut, they'll actually kind of wiggle back into each other. Wojcik and his students have been working in the lab for over a year to find the right combination of materials to make the idea work. But now, the team has developed a prototype of the wearable sensor system, which can bend, twist, and stretch up to 30 times its original size. We thought that that might also be useful in applications like robotics, things like that, where something can telescope and stretch come back. Even when torn in half, Wojcik says the material can reattach itself within a few hours. And the team says a sensor with properties like that can have a variety of uses in healthcare. With the help of our sensor, we can measure the voice modulation and also the pulse we can measure using our sensor. It could be used to monitor movement. Someone who's elderly, make sure that they're bending their knee to a certain angle if they're rehabbing. The team will continue to research and experiment with the goal of forming the sensors into sleeves, shirts, or suits. Hopefully we can uh, actually start building some real applicable devices. In Orono, David Ledford, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. It's now a little over a year before the Real ID requirements for federally regulated travel take effect. Our Augusta reporter Corey Bouchard learns more about the Real ID and what it takes to get one. Starting in May of 2025, uh, everyone traveling in the United States, uh, even if you're just going from Maine to Boston, if you were flying, you were going to have to have either a Real ID or a federally recognized ID like a passport or a passport card. When the Department of Homeland Security begins enforcing the Real ID law, it will have been 20 years since it was passed by Congress. But what does it take to get a Real ID in Maine? 
Hi, how can I help you? Hello, I'm here to get a real ID today. Okay, I'll take your driver's license and what you brought with you for documents. We began by making an appointment online and reviewing exactly what documentation to bring using an online checklist. Review that checklist because there are two important things that you have to demonstrate to the satisfaction of the customer service representative at the BMV. Your legal presence in the United States, and that includes if you were born here. You need an official copy of your birth certificate or a passport will also satisfy that requirement for showing your legal presence. Similarly, you also need proof of residency. And you should look for two documents that have your actual street address. Secretary Bellow says the process is similar to renewing your regular ID. The clerk checks the required documents, asks a few questions. And are you registered to vote in your town? Yes. Okay. And if you're like me and haven't updated your ID picture in over a decade, take a new photo. Most frequently women who change their name in marriage or divorce. We need to be able to trace the name change. So we need all of the documentation that shows name changes to the current name. That might be an official marriage certificate or a divorce decree or probate documents. If you're not a fan of the real ID, Secretary Bellows says you can still get your regular ID. Now, if you do plan to travel, you can do so using a passport or other federal approved means of identification. In Augusta, I'm Cora Bouchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Well, while local businesses and organizations in Millinocket have lined up events and festivities for the upcoming eclipse, town officials say they aren't planning any events. They're just prioritizing safety. Our Grace Blanchard has more. The town of Millinocket has coined itself as the biggest small town in Maine, but this small town is preparing to be flooded by thousands of tourists. I don't think any of our towns have ever tried to imagine what would it be like if we quadrupled our population on one day. Town officials say the eclipse is expected to draw anywhere between 10 to 50,000 people. Many residents are welcoming the influx of visitors. I'm hoping that people will come and, you know, spend their money locally and, you know, help us all out. Well, I'm 67, so I know this is a once in a lifetime, so, you know, I'm not going to be around for another 60 years. <laughs> Although many businesses and organizations are planning events, the town says they're focused on managing public safety. We are far more concerned about the safety of the public and the resources that the public will be able to use during that day. Public safety officials say crews will be scattered all throughout the community to ensure the safety of visitors and residents. We've been working closely with our law enforcement partners, mutual aid, as well as the hospital to make sure that we're all ready to work together in the event of anything that, that could happen for a large incident. Town officials are recommending locals stock up on gas and groceries prior to the eclipse and are asking visitors for patience. We're a very small community in the middle of the woods um, and, and we're doing the, the absolute best we can to pull resources together to, to try to accommodate this many people. In Millinocket, Grace Blanchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. And every time we talk about it, I just get a little bit more excited for the big day. Oh, and it's... I, I think it's really going to be jaw dropping. Yeah. Yeah. All righty. Well, coming up on the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22, we'll have the latest from Israel's war in Gaza, including renewed calls for a temporary ceasefire. And former President Trump faces a Monday deadline to secure nearly half a billion dollars or have his assets seized. Those stories and more as the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22 continues. I've been with U.S. Cellular for years now, and I think I'm their biggest fan. They asked me to tell you about their special customer event, Us Days. Us Days means exclusive deals just for us customers. Us Days at U.S. Cellular. Get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. This rugged workhorse pairs capability with comfort. Bold styling with advanced safety features. And she has the best resale value in her class. Toyota Tundra. What's the story behind your Tundra? She's my work truck. She's my boat hauling truck. She's my get him to the game safely truck. Perhaps it's time to write the tale of your Tundra. To get started, all roads lead to down east on Wilson Street in Brewer. As a child, you just couldn't keep me out of the puddles. 
That's where the acorn essentially was planted. As we got started, we had nothing in the bank. We were cash poor. Now it's just a one-man show. The support of my credit union, starting the business, the banking advice, when you can call them and they're there for you, that's tremendous. It's been a great asset for me and for my company's growth. It's really an exciting time, and my credit union made that possible. Orono is more than just a college town. It's an affordable destination. Welcome to the Orono Arcade, where we have both modern and retro games. And for a new experience, check out our nine-hole black light mini golf course. Budget-friendly, fun for the whole family, with 13 restaurants within walking distance. We look forward to seeing you soon at the Orono Arcade. Your best days of the year start here at Kubota Orange Days. It's the year's biggest selection of Kubota tractors, zero-turn mowers, and utility vehicles, including the number one selling compact tractor in the USA. Plus the year's best deals, like 0% APR for 84 months or up to $3,300 off select compact tractors. Orange goes all day. Sales ending soon. Visit your local dealer today. Right now at U.S. Cellular, you can get a new phone without having to trade in your old one. I'll trade you my PB&J for that phone. No, kid, you don't have to trade. See? $830 off any phone at U.S. Cellular. No trade-in needed. Boom. Chocolate milk. I'll take the chocolate milk. U.S. Cellular. Built for us. If you've been injured, call Joe. The law officers of Joe Bornstein. Secretary of State Antony Blinken continues his trip to, middle, to the Middle East with a visit to Israel. It comes as tensions build between the Biden administration and P P Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Fox's Alex Hogan has more. Secretary of State Antony Blinken meeting with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the Israeli War Cabinet on Friday, marking his sixth visit to the region since the war began. But this one comes at a tense time for the two allies. The Biden administration is making a diplomatic push for a sustained ceasefire and urging Israel to hold off on a planned ground offensive in the city of Rafah, an operation Netanyahu says is critical to defeating Hamas. A major military operation uh, in Rafah uh, would be a mistake, something we don't support, and it's also not necessary. Blinken says Israel also needs to take more steps to allow more humanitarian aid into Gaza. Airdrops continued across the Gaza Strip on Friday, but public health officials say that it's not enough. According to the World Health Organization, a growing number of children under five years old are malnourished. Only the expansion of land crossings will enable large-scale deliveries to prevent famine. And on Friday, the U.N. Security Council voting on a U.S.-sponsored resolution calling for an immediate ceasefire that would come with the release of all remaining hostages. 11 votes in favor, 3 votes against, 1 abstention. The draft resolution has not been adopted. The Biden administration says it's necessary to protect civilians and allow for more aid to displaced people in Gaza. Meanwhile, an Israeli delegation will head to Washington next week to discuss the Rafa offensive. In London, Alex Hogan, Fox News. The Senate appears less likely a, to avoid a partial government shutdown this weekend as senators still need to vote to break a filibuster. And there could be a rocky road ahead in the House where some members are now talking about ousting House Speaker Mike Johnson. Fox's Chad Pergram has more. The Senate debating a spending bill Friday, working to avoid a partial government shutdown this weekend. But the minibus spending bill is anything but. It's a thousand pages packed with $1.2 trillion of funding legislation. Here we find ourselves uh, dealing with appropriations bills that should have been completed last September. Some senators are unhappy with earmarks in the bill. $2 million for the construction of a kelp and shellfish nursery in Maine. $1.5 million to encourage video gaming in New York. The third item we have is $388,000 for Columbia University. Others are outraged about what was left out. The House has sent it over here without funding in it to support Ukraine, and I think that's shameful. The House passed the bill midday Friday. The motion to reconsider is laid on the table. Not everyone celebrated the buzzer beater. 
The House voted on the bill just hours after text appeared, breaking a self-imposed rule. That's why GOP Georgia Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene wants to remove House Speaker Mike Johnson. I am saying the clock has started. It's time for our conference to choose a new speaker. And this stunt uh, by Marjorie is idiotic. Greene is lording her resolution over the head of House Speaker Mike Johnson, but she's not insisting the House vote on it yet. It's the same tactic which stripped former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy of his gavel. On Capitol Hill, Chad Pergram, Fox News. Former President Trump has until Monday to secure a $454 million bond or face the possibility of losing some of his properties. He's waiting for a decision on his appeal from a state court. Fox's C.B. Cotton has more. Staring down a Monday deadline to secure a bond for nearly half a billion dollars, former President Donald Trump says he's got the cash and the gumption, telling Fox News Digital, quote, I'll fight this all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court if necessary. The former president also told Fox Digital he has nearly 500 million in cash and properties driving loads of money, but added, quote, that doesn't mean I'm going to give money to a rogue and incompetent judge, the puppet of a corrupt attorney general. Trump's criticism for those involved in the New York civil fraud trial against him, Judge Arthur N. Gorin and New York Attorney General Letitia James, comes after his legal team told the court Trump had been unable to secure a bond for the $454 million civil fraud judgment against him. Trump's lawyers have asked the court to waive the bond or accept a smaller amount while they appeal the massive judgment. No one's ruled, but there could be new cash flows on the horizon for Trump. On Thursday, the Associated Press broke word of the fundraising agreement between Trump and the RNC, placing the committee third in line after Trump's campaign and his primary political action committee, Save America. Save America has paid legal expenses in the past, but a spokesperson noted, quote, Save America also covers a very active and robust post-presidency office and other various expenses. Another source of cash that could be freed up is through Trump's social media company, which manages True Social. It will be going public. There is a potential windfall of $3 billion or more for Trump, who's got a majority stake, but only if the board waives a six-month lockup period on his shares. While well, New York Attorney General Letitia James has taken some initial steps to seize property should Trump not come up with the bond, legal experts tell us she'll likely go after his bank accounts first. In New York, C.B. Cotton, Fox News. In other news, an incredible tale of bravery, a long overdue ceremony taking place on Capitol Hill this week to honor a secretive group of World War II veterans whose service during the war saved tens of thousands of lives. However, their story is one that's been kept secret. Fox's Chad Pergram again now with those details. They never fired a gun, never parachuted behind enemy lines but they did blow up tanks, as in inflatable tanks. They made these things out of neoprene rubber, and all we had to do was to inflate them with air. It is said that war is business, but in this case, show business. So as the curtain rose on the European theater, the U.S. Ghost Army staged a blockbuster. With prop tanks, Americans hoodwinked the Germans into thinking American troops were one place when they were actually someplace else. Voice actors read fake radio transmissions, diverting the Nazis along the Rhine. Stagecraft of the Ghost Army practically qualified for the Oscars. We teach our Army planners that the cornerstone of what we now call military deception operations is the story. And the Ghost Army were master storytellers. Lawmakers honored the Ghost Army with their highest honor, the Congressional Gold Medal. But because of the courageous work of this group, it is estimated that 15 to 30,000 lives were saved. The Ghost Army staged nearly two dozen decoy operations in France, Luxembourg, Belgium, and Germany. They would plant themselves and have conversations in hotels or in cafes to, again, to deceive the enemy, as they would have overhear these conversations. The operations remained classified until the mid-1990s. The Ghost Army's tactics were meant to be invisible, but today they're contributions will no longer remain unseen in the shadows. Which means for members of the Ghost Army, it's finally time to take a bow. On Capitol Hill, Chad Pergram, 
Fox News. Something Funding. you wouldn't even think about doing. Right. Just incredible. Yeah, amazing story there. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad to hear that their service is finally being honored. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Yeah. All right. Well, still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, the world reacts to Princess Catherine's cancer diagnosis. We'll hear from the princess herself. And we'll have a live report from Boston for Maine Men's Hockey East semifinal game against BU. We'll be back. Saturdays. Baseball's best are showing out. The biggest games on the best day of the week. Fox Saturday Baseball returns March 30th. PDQ Door presents CHI Doors. CHI Doors are tough, dependable, engineered for fit and function. CHI Doors from PDQ Door, Hamden, Rockport, Bath, Waterville, Holton, Presque Isle, and PDQDoor.com. Jerry's Used Cars has been a family-owned business for more than 30 years, currently in Corinna and DZ. However, we have changed a little as we are no longer just a buy here, pay here dealership. We now have access to outside financing and also carry utility trailers. We would be happy to assist you with your next vehicle purchase. And don't forget, here at Jerry's Used Cars, we offer an extended warranty. So give us a call at either our Corinna or VZ location. Family owned and operating in the Bangor area for more than 10 years, Crosby's Welding is here to help you. We specialize in steel, stainless steel, and aluminum welding and fabrication. We serve many of the local industries from Maine lobstermen to the commercial trucking industry and everything in between. Fully mobile on-site construction services right down to custom signs and fire pits. Fast, friendly, reliable service. Give us a call today for a free estimate, 974-7815. So we've lived in this house coming up 23 years. We just bought the tractor, and I haven't any idea how we survived without it. We're trying to rebuild the rock wall on this new property. She says, pick that rock up and put it here. No, it'll look better if you turn it this way. No, we're going to need to move it over there five feet. I would come to him and say, can you do this for me? And he'd kind of, you know, do the, ugh. But now he has a tractor. He's much more motivated. Experience United, your local John Deere dealer. Why should your new floor come from Carpet One? Because we're passionate about the spaces our neighbors call home. We're part of your community, and we're also part of the world's largest cooperative of independently owned and operated flooring stores. So you can be sure you'll get great selection and outstanding value with every installation. Whether it's carpet, hardwood, tile, or luxury vinyl, our experts take the guesswork out of choosing the right floor. We're your local Carpet One Floor and Home, the one store for your perfect floor. Always standing ready to answer the call to service. Service your garage door. PDQ door. PDQdoor.com. Catherine, the Princess of Wales, makes a shocking announcement that she has cancer. The diagnosis comes just over a month after King Charles announced that he is being treated for cancer as well. Fox's Connor Hansen has the details. Catherine, the Princess of Wales, says she found out she had cancer after her major abdominal surgery earlier this year. The princess asking for privacy for her family after weeks of skepticism over where she's been. Princess Catherine says she has been out of public view to recover from surgery and start cancer treatment. Most importantly, it has taken us time to explain everything to George, Charlotte and Louis in a way that's appropriate for them and to reassure them that I'm going to be okay. Back in January, Catherine underwent major abdominal surgery. After the operation, tests revealed cancer had been present. This, of course, came as a huge shock. And William and I have been doing everything we can to process and manage this privately for the sake of our young family. After weeks of intense public scrutiny over the princess's absence, supporters hope the announcement will put an end to rumors. This was a very powerful uh, statement from, uh, from the Princess of Wales, very moving. Uh, and, and I think this was certainly uh, the right uh, decision uh, taken by, uh, by the Princess of Wales. Uh, and, and I think the entire country will rally around her now. King Charles was also diagnosed with cancer just over a month ago. The White House saying it's important to respect the royal family's privacy after hearing the news. And certainly we wish her a full recovery. 
Princess Catherine says she's in the early stages of preventative chemotherapy. In New York, Connor Hansen, Fox News. Well, Congress says it wants to regulate artificial intelligence, but so far state lawmakers are leading the way there. Fox's Jonathan Hunt has more from Los Angeles. Our state protects us and what we're about and what we work so hard for. With artificial intelligence regulation stalled on the federal level, we're seeing more action by the states. On Thursday, a first-of-its-kind law was signed by Tennessee Governor Bill Lee, aimed at protecting musicians from having their voices stolen by technology. The legislation is being welcomed by singers and songwriters in Nashville, the country music capital of the world, where superstars like Luke Bryan say they've already been the victim of so-called deep fakes. Stuff comes in of my voice on my phone and I can't tell it's not me. The bill is officially called the Ensuring Likeness, Voice and Image Security Act, or Elvis Act for short. It criminalizes anyone using AI tools to replicate an artist's voice without their legal consent. And industry leaders say that type of voice cloning has been a growing problem for musicians at all levels. This is their art. They spend their entire lives honing their craft and developing their brand and their voice. Advocates are now hoping to build momentum for nationwide deep fake protections. And lawmakers on Capitol Hill are considering a number of bills that would regulate the technology. Advertisers and policymakers must come together to build a solution and address the issue head on. The bill passed with wide bipartisan support. It's scheduled to take effect on July 1st. In Los Angeles, Jonathan Hunt. Fox News. AI is certainly just a a multi-layered, complex thing. It is. And, you know, sometimes it sounds like a good thing, and other times it just really sounds threatening. Yeah, and here's hoping that leaders can get ahead of the game and... Strike a balance. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. All All right, right. when we come back, we'll have our full forecast. Everyone stay with us. Don't forget those shovels, folks, because a lot of snow is on the way. We're talking feet of snow in some spots by Saturday. Get ready. How much snow are we going to get and the timing for everything? I'll have all of that coming up. Spring is the season of rejuvenation and the perfect time to revitalize your home with Renewal by Anderson. Our spring savings event is only once a year. Call Renewal by Anderson to schedule your free window diagnosis and take advantage of this incredible limited time offer. We've installed over 4 million windows, earning us 4.7 stars in customer satisfaction. Call the number below or visit us online today. And remember, call now because these great savings end soon. The better way to a better window. Renewal by Anderson. This spring is the perfect time to get away with a great deal on your favorite Hyundai model. All backed by America's best warranty, plus three years or 36,000 miles of complimentary maintenance. Add more joy to your journey at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Get in and get away now before these deals are gone. Lease an all-wheel drive Palisade SEL for only $349 a month or step up and get a limited with $1,500 bonus cash. See your Bangor Hyundai dealer. The best value for your money is always at the Furniture Gallery. Strike gold on value and comfort with recliners starting at $298 and power recliners starting at $398. Feel like a lucky charm with deals on this reclining sofa for $598 or on this sofa chaise also $598. Find unbeatable savings at the Furniture Gallery on top brands like Serta, Restonic, Parker House, Ashley, Flexsteel, and more. Markdown Madness is happening now, so hurry in and save big. The Furniture Gallery in Augusta, Bangor, Newport, and North Wyndham. Your favorite restaurants were half off. It's half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. Go to foxbangor.com, click on half off dining, and start saving now. The Maniac Snack Shack. You will find delicious, tasty, insane desserts. Oh, and wait, there is more. We offer breakfast, lunch, and dinner options for take home. You want something special? Let us know, and we'll create that perfect treat for any occasion. The Maniac Snack Shack. Place your order today. Great restaurants from all over Eastern Maine at half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. John Hamm stars as Detective Marvin Flute in Grim Bite. Big Bite. Grimsburg. All new Sundays on Fox. Welcome back, folks. Our main weather is brought to you by Varney Ford. Varney Ford in Newport gives one full year maintenance on every new and 
used vehicle they sell. Come see their uh, them and see their huge selection of cars and trucks. The nice car and truck people. And get ready, folks. A big, big, big low-pressure system is on the way. It's going to be here in the next few hours. All of this moisture, that's headed our way. It doesn't look like a lot right now, but it's going to be twice that size but in just the next few hours. For now, though, we're continuing to see those increasing clouds statewide, and that will be the case right before that snow moves in after midnight. So right about that morning commute tomorrow, that's when the snow will be taking over the state and then really picking up an in intensity. So moderate to even heavy snowfall at times throughout the day on Saturday. Then the warmer temperatures roll in. That battle, that rain and snow battle will be moving up closer to our area. Mainly rain by the coast. That's going to happen in the afternoon hours on Saturday. Rain and snow mix here in town. Dover, Foxcroft, Greenville, Millinocket area on the north of that. You're pretty much going to be at all snow, which means a lot of it will be piling up. Temperatures below freezing. A good amount of moisture that will be lasting for over 24 hours and some places are expected well over a foot of snow here in town though we're going to be right at that battle the rain and snow battle as we see most of the time right the significant snowfall accumulation line right up here in town where it could be at around six inches or it could be at a foot plus really depends on that rain and snow line. A lot of snow is guaranteed up north. Greenville, Millinocket area, and then even Dover, Foxcroft, you're going to get in on over a foot of snow. That looks like it's very likely all over the region here in town. Like I said, it's just going to be so hard to say with that rain and snow. 50 mile difference will be the difference even up to a foot of snow. That's why it's so hard to say how much is going to snow exactly, but we're thinking anywhere around six inches, maybe up to a foot of snow here in town and then the more north you go the totals will be multiplying yes winter storm warnings have been posted all over the state even some flood watches and warnings as well because of all that liquid equivalent precipitation on the way and we're talking well over two inches of liquid equivalent precipitation all over the state just in the matter of 24 to 36 hours the winds are pretty light anywhere around 5 10 miles per hour all over the state they're going to be picking up an intense Density. We're looking at Sunday, especially pretty breezy conditions where some places might see wind gusts around 40 plus miles per hour. Temperature wise, though, our average high is around 42. We're going to continue to stay well below that. And then finally closer to average by middle to end of next week. Tonight, though, 19 degrees, increasing clouds and some flurries will be possible late for tomorrow. Though, mainly snow heavy at times. Some rain and snow will be mixed in that pretty breezy conditions. Temperatures slightly around freezing or slightly above that. Our extended forecast outlook does show rain and snow for Saturday, and then we're in the clear by Sunday. All right, so we'll be hunkering down and ready for it. It does sound like it <laughs> already. Well, sports is coming up next, folks. Keep it right here. CEM DP Porter contractors have been in business for more than 40 years. We have recently added an electrical division to further be of service to our loyal customers. CEM specializes in design, build, and commercial and residential projects. Whether you need help with older construction, new build outs, or electrical services, CEM has you covered. CEM is currently hiring for all positions. We offer competitive pay as well as great benefits. To inquire about employment or construction, please reach out to 848 7486 or visit cemmain.com. With Flonase, allergies don't have to be scary. Spray Flonase Sensimus daily for non-drowsy, long-lasting relief in a scent-free gentle mist. Flonase, all good. Also, try our allergy headache and nighttime pills. Transform your surroundings with Paramount Paving, located in Bangor. They are your paving and seal coating experts. Whether it's residential maintenance to full commercial projects, Paramount Paving delivers quality that lasts. Book before June 1st and enjoy a $250 Visa gift card upon completion of your next paving project. Call us today at 602-8931 or visit us at ParamountPavingLLC.com. Paramount Paving, setting the standard for excellence. When it comes to paving, we are Paramount. When Ye Old General Store in Carmel wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. Ye Old General has everything you ever need, whether it be fresh cooked meal, kerosene, wood pellets, pizza and fried food, or a drink after work, Ye Old General has you covered. Introducing Hood New England Creamery, made with premium hood milk and cream and overloaded with the good stuff. New England Creamery, from Hood for New England. Try all 10 flavors. 
25 words or less. 11 words. Oh, you just came to slay. Oh. <laughs> Every weekday, wave, light, pebbles. Rebel! You did it. You did it. Weekdays at 9 on Fox 22. The USFL champs versus the XFL champs. UFL kickoff weekend begins Saturday, March 30th at 1 on Fox. Hey everybody, Ryan Sudol here. Thank you so much for joining us. Huge, huge day for Black Bear Sports. Let's get started with Black Bear Hockey. The three-seeded Black Bears facing off against the two-seed BU in Maine's first Hockey East semifinal game in 12 years. We've got highlights and more as Tyler Cruz is live at TD Garden. Tyler. Hey Ryan, like you said, I am here live at TD Garden. Kind of just took my punch right out. Maine playing in their very first Hockey East semifinal game since 2012. A big day for Maine hockey. Not the ending they wanted, but I could sit here and talk about that, or we could get to some of those highlights. Let's roll that clip. Maine looking to advance to the conference championship against BC, third meeting against the Terriers. Terriers would draw first blood in this one, though. Maine trying to clear, but BU, they would keep it in. Uh, Quinn Hudson finds Ryan Green, finishes the job, Maine down one. Looking to tie things up, Terrier defender falls, Donovan Hool all alone, but a great save there from Matthew Caron in net. And Caron would do it again. This time it is Cole Hansen, nice shifty move, but he can't beat Caron either. So to the second we go, more of the same. Maine with five shots on goal in the first two minutes and change. Caron stopped all five of those. In the second still, Maine down a man after a no Nolan Renwick penalty, just 24 seconds in the power play. Quinn Hudson and Macklin Celebrini assist on the goal from Lane Hudson. Two to nothing, BU now. All right, in third period, BU had a goal waved off. Still two nothing. Maine makes it two to one. Power play goal from the captain, Lyndon Breen, and it is a whole new ball game, but BU would answer right back. Ryan Green with his second on the power play. This one coming from Macklin Celebrini. Three to one, Terriers. They go on to win. Here's what Ben Barr had to say after the game about the experience and about his message to the team. And you walk out there and you see all those, you know, main jerseys and, you know, all the people have been waiting for however long, 10, 12 years um, to come back here and, and, and the same for the NCAA tournament. It makes it sting when you don't get the job done tonight. It's a special place to coach. It's a special place to play. And uh, we're really fortunate. Yeah, the main uh, coach Ben Barr and Lyndon Breen, both at that postgame press conference, both seemed pretty dejected that they were not playing for a Hockey East championship tomorrow night. But the message from both of them, really the same. Take this loss, learn from it. Their season is not done. They will likely be a two seed in the NCAA tournament. They will know their fate, their opponent, their location, all that on Sunday, on Selection Sunday for the hockey tournament. And then next weekend, they'll be back at it trying to win a national championship this time, not just a Hockey East championship. So the Silver lining season is not done Maine can take this loss hopefully turn it into some wins in the NCAA tournament we'll be following them all post season but for now that's it for me live in Boston I'm Tyler Cruz with Fox ABC Sports Ryan back to you thank you so much Tyler let's go to another huge sporting event for the Black Bears today women's basketball the 15 seed Maine playing the two seed Ohio State in the Black Bears' first tournament game in five years. To Columbus we go. Maine starting out hot. We are tied at 11, and Simon kicks it to Adriana Smith, and she drills the three. Black Bears up 14-11. End of the quarter now. Ohio State's J.C. Sheldon bringing it past half court. Pulls from inside the circle and drills the floater at the horn. Bucks up six, and they go on a run in the second, outscoring the Black Bears 21-8, capped off by another buzzer beater this time from Madison Green. Third quarter now. Simon down court, and it's Olivia Rockwood from the wing for her fourth of five threes on the day. Later, Simon in her final game as a Black Bear, driving inside, getting the hoop plus the harm. She had 25 points, leading all scorers. Fourth quarter, Buckeyes maintaining their huge lead, and here's Rebecca Mikulisakova for the corner three. Maine falls 80-57, to but what a year. Really proud of our team. Uh, I felt like we battled the entire game. Could not be prouder of our team, uh, the season that we've had, and the way we battled today. I'm just so happy and so proud that I chose Maine. Um, just coming here freshman year, um, everyone was so welcome. I can't thank them enough for everything they've done for me. 
Great stuff there from Ann Simon. Great stuff from the Black Bears all year. Now let's stick with the Black Bears again and go to the Diamond. Main Baseball opening America East play Friday with a doubleheader against Bryant. Let's check out game one. Top of the seventh. Main down three to one. This is Jake Marquez at the plate. He rips this one into left field. Charging on is Colin Plant to score. And it is three to two. Next batter, Jeremiah Jenkins. First pitch he sees is obliterated to right center. That thing is long gone. Maine takes a four to three lead. It's a seven inning game here, so this is extra innings. Bottom eight, we're tied now, and Bryant's Carmine Potosa drills one into right. Daniel Baruch is gonna be waved around from first. The throw to the plate, not in time. Bulldogs take game one, 5-4 in eight innings in walk-off fashion. Similar fate in game two, a walk-off there as well. 5-4 loss there as well. Black Bears get swept. Ah, well, that's all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back after the break. Maine's number one Kia dealer, Van Sickle Kia, just received over four truckloads of new Kias with more arriving daily. Choose from the award-winning Kia Telluride, Sportage, Sorento, EV6, and the all-new EV9. Whether you're looking for gas engine, hybrid, plug-in hybrid, or fully electric, Van Sickle Kia has something for everyone. Choose from a great selection of award-winning Kia vehicles, all with America's best warranty, 10 years or 100,000 miles, only at Van Sickle Kia. The best cars, the best prices, and the best warranty. I'm Peter Van Sickle. I guarantee it. My father worked at the mill for over 30 years. He was exposed to a great community and excelled at his job, but he was also exposed to asbestos. The air quality inside the mill was always his biggest complaint. He had no idea how deadly some of the products and materials were. When he was diagnosed with mesothelioma, we knew to call Joe Bornstein's office to get my dad the help he needs and the justice he deserves. Call Joe today for a free case evaluation. There's never a fee unless you win. Come stop by Triple S Tax Shop, 315 Hendon Road, Carmel, for quality clothing and equestrian gear. Rowell's Garage has been serving customers in the greater Dover Foxcroft region since 1946. Our goal is not just selling you a vehicle, but also giving you quality service to maintain your vehicle at peak performance. Browse our inventory online or in person. Whether it's a car, truck, or SUV, we can put you in the vehicle that is right for you. Sales, service, and parts. Rowell's Garage, doing business the right way every day. Welcome to 207 Wellness, where transformation begins from within. Embark on a journey of self-betterment with our comprehensive services from weight management to IV hydration, vitamin supplementation, and neurotoxin injections. 207 Wellness is here to support your wellness goals. Take the first step toward a healthier, happier you, rejuvenate your body, refresh your mind, and reclaim your vitality with 207 Wellness. Transform your wellness, transform your life. Give us a call today. Welcome to MasterChef Junior. This looks better than half the dishes. I'm at my dad's restaurant. <laughs> MasterChef Junior, all new, Mondays on Fox. An, icon an iconic ghost is back for more Afterlife Chaos. A multi-Grammy winner scores another award and more. Here's Fox's Kristen Goodwin with all of the latest in the Hollywood Nation. The juice is loose. Beetlejuice returns. The Targaryens prepare for war. And Beyonce receives a special honor in the Hollywood Nation. Still working on my Beyonce is being recognized for her influence on pop culture and music. The 32-time Grammy winner will be honored with the iHeartRadio Innovator Award at Fox's iHeartRadio Music Awards. Actor and rapper Ludacris is set to host the celebration of fan-favorite artists, which will feature performances by Justin Timberlake, Green Day, Jelly Roll, Lainey Wilson, and more. Plus, there will be a special musical tribute to the 2024 iHeartRadio Icon Award recipient, Cher. The ceremony airs live from Hollywood's Dolby Theater, April 1st, only on Fox. 
Killian Murphy will be back to lead his Birmingham street gang. Murphy, who recently won the Best Actor Oscar for Oppenheimer, will reprise his role as gangster Tommy Shelby in the upcoming Peaky Blinders movie. Show creator Stephen Knight confirmed the news to Birmingham World during a red carpet interview at the premiere of his new series, This Town. The film adaptation of the hit BBC period crime series starts production this September. To war then. HBO wants Game of Thrones fans to choose a side in today's first looks. The network released dueling trailers for House of the Dragon season two, giving a glimpse at Princess Rhaenyra's and Queen Alicent's all-out war to claim the Iron Throne. The show returns June 16th. Michael Keaton suits back up as Tim Burton's iconic ghost in Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Warner Brothers dropped the teaser trailer for the sequel to the 1988 horror comedy, which also features Winona Ryder and Catherine O'Hara reprising their roles as Lydia and Delia Deeds. Jenna Ortega joins the cast as Lydia's daughter Astrid. The afterlife chaos arrives to theaters September 6th. In Hollywood, Kristen Goodwin, Fox News. This weekend, American Idol will have a contestant from Cumberland, Maine, gracing their stage. Her name is Julia Gagnon, and, she, and we think she's got a pretty good shot of making it in. Our Devin Dagnall got the chance to talk with her and is ready to tell you all about it. Here's everything you need to know about Maine's American Idol hopeful, Julia Gagnon. <laughs> Julia was born in Guatemala, but she was adopted as a toddler and raised in Cumberland, Maine, so she's a Mainer through and through. Growing up, she wasn't exactly the kind of person that would get up in front of a panel of judges to sing her heart out. I did not sing at all. You could not pay me to sing in front of a crowd. The 21-year-old's musical journey actually started pretty recently. Julia says during a lot of her school career, she was bullied, and that kept her pretty introverted. But she got a little out of her shell for a middle school talent show performance. I had recently seen Wicked on Broadway. So I sang popular from Wicked, because why not? You're gonna be popular. From there, she was swept up by her school's chorus director and became a performance staple. She is really, I owe everything to her for really pushing me. After high school, Julia took a break from performances until she came back in a big way to win 2023's Central Maine Idol. <laughs> Having the validation of like beating out people who I genuinely thought were amazing and better than me, in my opinion. Having that vote still put me on top gave me the validation I think I needed. After that win, Julia decided to set her sights a little bit higher to make someone very near and dear to her heart very proud. My birth mother really wanted to see me do something like just as amazing, um, but on a greater scale. To watch Julia's audition and to see just how far she'll go, you can tune into American Idol Sunday night at 8 p.m. over on ABC7. In Bangor, Devin Dagnall, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. That is a voice right there. Seriously, Wowzers. so much power and range in yeah. her voice. I can't wait to see what she does on American Idol. And we wish her the best of luck. We do. Alrighty, well that's gonna do it for us folks. Take care and good night. Good night everyone.